a lot of stuff that's on today is coonery buffoonery. And I know it's making a lot of money, breaking records, but we could do better because each artist should be allowed to pursue the artistic endeavor. But I still think there are a lot of stuff that's on today. I don't know, man. Is this like Tyler Perry? He paints a very negative portrayal of black men. We ain't that bad. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, Tyler Perry makes us seem like we ain't sh We put too much pressure on Tyler Perry. <laughs> you know what I mean? He ain't put nobody on. The people that been in his productions, they not famous. All of them can walk through the mall without security. I don't know, man. Sometimes I wonder if Tyler Perry is like, he's going on, he's on a crusade to make black men look as bad as possible so women don't want us no more so he can have all the men himself. If you've watched a bunch of Tyler Perry movies, you might have noticed something. There aren't really any A-list black male actors, or A-list actors in general, showing up in his films. And that's surprising when you think about it because Perry is one of Hollywood's top black producers with a huge budget, literally billions of dollars. So why is that? Now, Tyler Perry's got an incredible personal story. He went from being homeless to becoming a multi-millionaire who owns a jet in one of the largest movie studios in the country. Honestly, Perry's journey could probably be his best movie yet, but instead of seeing that inspiring story, we keep getting hit with the same old formula. Perry in a wig and dress playing Medea or another character with a similar vibe. It's no wonder that big name directors like Spike Lee have been vocal about their criticism. The man has a huge audience and he's, Tyler's very smart. We know what he's done. He started out, you know, with these plays and church buses would pull up, bought his own jet. You know, you can buy a jet, you got money. <laughs> but at the same time, for me, just imagery is, is, is troubling. And it's worth mentioning that Spike Lee is super tight with A-listers like Wesley Snipes, Denzel Washington, and Samuel L. Jackson. So his words carry a lot of weight in the industry. Hello, I'm Wesley Snipes. I want to talk about my friend Spike Lee. It's pretty well known that Spike Lee and Tyler Perry haven't always been on the best of terms. Despite both being influential voices in black cinema, they've had their fair share of disagreements. While both of them have made significant contributions to showcasing black culture on screen, they've taken very different paths to do so. The tension between them really started to get public attention around 2009, when Spike Lee, who's never been one to hold back his opinions, criticized Perry's films and TV shows. He called them out for what he saw as coonery and buffoonery, essentially saying that Perry's work was reinforcing negative stereotypes about the black community. It's coonery and buffoonery. And I know it's making a lot of money, breaking records, but we could do better. Spike didn't hold back in an interview with Black Enterprise, where he compared Perry's content to the type of stereotypical depictions found on what he called the idiot box, a pretty harsh jab at TV in general. A lot of this is on us. You know, we, you vote with your pocketbook, your wallet, you vote with uh, your time sitting in front of the, the idiot box. Sure, he acknowledged that Perry is smart and knows how to draw in an audience. And let's be real, Perry does have a massive fan base and he's no slouch when it comes to creating content that people love. But Spike wasn't too happy with the image Perry's movies and shows were promoting. He basically accused Perry of pandering to what would get the best ratings, even if that meant playing into harmful stereotypes. And honestly, a lot of people think Spike might have a point. Tyler Perry's brand of comedy often leans on simplistic and stereotypical portrayals. And while he argues that he's creating jobs for black actors and making tons of money, critics say that's not a good enough reason to keep pushing those kinds of images. It's like saying that just because a crack dealer or a heroin when dealer is making money and keeping some cash in the community that somehow justifies the harm they're causing. Or think about big corporations that make tons of money and employ a lot of people but also push out smaller companies with quality products because they flood the market with cheap goods. The point is, making money doesn't automatically mean what you're doing is right or good for the community. Spike Lee, on the other hand, has always been about creating movies that celebrate black culture without falling into those old, tired stereotypes. Sure, his films may not always be blockbusters at the box office, but Spike's proud of the stories he tells. For him, it's all about showing love and respect to the black community through his art. But Tyler Perry didn't just sit back and let Spike Lee's criticism slide. He fired back, and he did it hard. It all went down in 2009 when Perry 
Perry was on 60 Minutes, and they asked him about what Spike had been saying about his work. Perry didn't hold back. He let loose and said he was completely overhearing Spike Lee's name. He sounded fed up. Perry went so far as to say that Spike could go straight to hell. Punch the hell out of you. Say something else. That is my answer to Spike Lee. Go to hell. Go sh he wasn't in the mood for any of Spike's critiques, especially the ones about coonery and buffoonery. Perry was basically telling Spike to mind his own business and stop taking shots at him and other heavyweights like Oprah and Clint Eastwood. He flat out said, I'm so sick of hearing about damn Spike Lee. Spike can go straight to hell. You can print that. I am sick of him talking about me. I am sick of him saying, this is a coon, this is a buffoon. He talked about Whoopi. He talked about Oprah. He talked about me. He talked about Clint Eastwood. Spike needs to shut the hell up. Even though Tyler Perry clapped back at Spike in a big way, a lot of fans weren't buying his response. They started pointing out some real issues with Perry's movies, like the way they often rely on overly stereotypical portrayals of black families and black culture. Then there are those overly dramatic films where black men and women are depicted as weak, evil, or just plain problematic. And let's not forget the behind-the-scenes rumors about a toxic work environment, forced religious practices, and whispers about Perry's stance on homo. Plus, people have noticed that in many of his films, dark-skinned black male actors are often cast as the villains. I'm not a Tyler Perry fan, so this is what I got to say. It's funny how he got all this money to do everything but the right thing. And this lets me know that he's scared of white people and he has to stay in this weird box. These criticisms have been floating around for a while, and even folks within the industry are talking about it. Take Chris Rock, for example. He's pointed out a recurring pattern in Perry's movies. Rock noticed that there aren't many kind, respectful, dark-skinned boyfriends in Perry's films. To make his point, he even brought up Tupac Shakur, suggesting that Perry's movies could use a bit more diversity in their characters. He joked, Tupac might be a political leader if he was alive. But then again, Tupac might be in a Tyler Perry movie right now, so you don't know. Tupac might be the bad dark-skinned boyfriend in the Tyler Perry movie. Basically, Rock was saying that if Tupac, who was a huge figure in his day, were to appear in a Tyler Perry film, he probably wouldn't be cast as the hero. Based on how Perry tends to cast his characters, Tupac would more likely end up playing the stereotypical bad guy. Rock was just laying out his thoughts on how things seem to work in the world of Tyler Perry's movies. He even went further, adding, I would hope he's a senator, but he might be kicking Jill Scott down a flight of stairs, which is his way of saying that the roles Perry offers often don't reflect the full spectrum of black experiences. Cultural critic Jamila Lemieux also jumped into the conversation. She wrote an open letter to Tyler Perry, which NPR published at Kudos, where she didn't hold back her feelings about his use of stereotypes in his work. Lemieux was straight up with Perry, saying that through his character Medea, the country has laughed at one of the most important members of the black community, the beloved matriarch. She wrote, I just can't quite get with seeing Mother Deer played by a six foot three man with prosthetic breasts flopping in the wind. Our mothers and grandmothers deserve much more than that. Heck, our fathers and grandfathers deserve more. Mr. Perry, you have told the Hollywood old guard to kiss your backside, and I appreciate that, brother, but many black folks have expressed some of the very same attitudes about your work that white critics have. Lemieux's point was clear. While Perry might be sticking it to Hollywood in some ways, he's also playing into some harmful stereotypes that don't do justice to the black community. So Chris Rock, Jamila Lemieux, and others are all on the same page here, pointing out that Tyler Perry's casting and storytelling choices might be playing into certain biases. They're questioning how this mindset could be impacting the film industry and the way black characters are portrayed on screen. And honestly, this issue of colorism and stereotyping isn't new to Hollywood, it's something that's been around for a while, and lately Hollywood's been under a lot of scrutiny for it. Media campaigns and hashtags have been popping up everywhere, bringing attention to some pretty shady practices. Remember Harvey Weinstein? He was one of the first major figures to drag the industry into a negative spotlight with all those A allegations back in 2017. Now there's even a new documentary spilling the tea on Hollywood's darker side exposing some of the power players who allegedly prey on aspiring actors. Fast forward to the hashtag MeToo movement, and Hollywood has been hit with scandals left and right. Kevin Hart had to step down as the Oscars host in 2019 over some old homophobic tweets, and the hashtag Oscars so white campaign is still calling for more diversity and better recognition for people of color and marginalized communities. Hollywood's reputation has really taken a nosedive over the years. 
Once a place where everyone wanted to be, it's now seen as a bit of a mess. Even the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which used to be the ultimate symbol of success, has lost some of its shine. It's more like a walk of shame these days, especially with all the stars who have fallen from grace. Let's rewind for a minute to a February afternoon in 1940s America, a time when Hollywood was really the center of the entertainment universe. That's when Hattie McDaniel made history by winning an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Gone with the Wind. She was the first African American to ever win an Academy Award, and you'd think that would have been a moment of pure celebration, right? Well, not quite. I sincerely hope I shall always be a credit to my race and to the motion picture industry. My heart is too full to tell you just how I feel. Even though it was a groundbreaking achievement, the Oscars back then were still a segregated affair. Patty was forced to sit at a separate table, away from the rest of the cast at the back of the room. Instead of her win being a symbol of progress, it was a reminder of the deep-rooted racial discrimination that permeated Hollywood and the country. It wasn't so much a celebration as it was a stark reminder of segregation and exclusion. Fast forward 80 years, and you'd hope things would be different, but guess what? Hollywood is still grappling with these same issues. Sure, there's a lot of talk about diversity and inclusion, but the actions haven't quite caught up. The 2020 Oscars, for example, weren't without their share of racial controversies, which at this point, viewers and insiders alike have almost come to expect. And don't even get me started on the snubs, like how Lupita Nyong'o got overlooked for her incredible performance in the the 2019 film Us. That one still stings for a lot of people. Now switching gears to Tyler Perry's corner of the entertainment world, you can't help but notice a pattern in his movies and TV shows. It's like, if you're a dark-skinned black actor, chances are you're going to be cast as the villain or some kind of negative character. Just look at Steve Harris in Diary of a Mad Black Woman. He plays Charles McCarter, a successful lawyer who's a complete nightmare of a husband. He straight up tells his wife he's leaving her for another woman and then treats her like garbage. It's a brutal portrayal, and it's not an isolated case in Perry's films. Our marriage has run its course. It's over. What? What are you trying to say? I'm saying it's over. Charles! Then there's Blair Underwood, who's been around for a long time, over four decades actually, and is known for his role in L.A. Law. He shared a story about his early days in Hollywood and a conversation with the legendary Sidney Poitier. Back in the 80s, it was super rare to see black faces on TV or in movies, and when you did, the roles were often limited and steeped in stereotypes. This lack of representation left black audiences without much to relate to on screen. Blair Underwood and Denzel Washington were pretty much the go-to black actors for leading roles back then, and they were widely praised for their work. But even with their success, Hollywood hadn't really changed much by the 90s. According to Underwood, every black actor and actress, no matter how talented or well-known, had to hustle for the same few roles. It was like a never-ending cycle of competition for the same limited opportunities. It didn't matter if you were a veteran or a newcomer. The challenges were the same across the board. Pushback, like why, we get, why they only want to see us as slaves or in the hood and yeah. Hollywood. And it's not just Blair Underwood who experienced this. You've got other actors like Philip Van Leer who got his chance to play a villain in one of Perry's movies as a dealer. Or Ion Overman, who played a shady assistant district attorney in Medea Goes to Jail. And let's not forget Ron Rico Lee, who was cast as Chuck, an assistant district attorney, and Brian White, who played Randy, the abusive boyfriend in I Can Do Bad All By Myself. If you look closely at Perry's work, there's a clear trend. A lot of the so-called villains in his films tend to be dark-skinned and, more often than not, are portrayed as abusive towards women. This pattern has sparked quite a bit of criticism over the years. People are speaking out, saying that these portrayals are harmful and reinforce negative stereotypes. Take his show Bruh, for example. It's all about four black men navigating life, dealing with relationships, friendships, and careers. They're shown as close as family, always smiling and having each other's backs. Yeah, you seem nervous. I'm a little confused. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Then there's Sistas, which takes a different angle, focusing on the lives of four single black women. The tagline, single but never solo, suggests it's about their journey through singlehood with all its ups and downs. I don't want to be with you no more. But here's the twist. The promotional materials for the show often feature the women individually rather than together. It's a subtle thing, but it could imply that while they're single, they're still on individual journeys. The series dives deep into their dating lives, careers, friendships, and everything in between. 
showcasing a more complex and varied portrayal of black women than some of Perry's previous work. Tyler Perry's movies always get people talking on social media, especially on platforms like X. A lot of folks have mixed feelings about how Perry portrays black women in his films, especially when it comes to the drama around relationships and the struggles they face because of the men in their lives. Some critics say Perry seems to focus too much on the hardships black women go through because of men, making his movies a bit repetitive and one-dimensional. But on the other hand, some people argue that Perry is just highlighting real-life issues that many black women can relate to, which makes his work resonate with a lot of viewers. And then there's the comedy style of Medea, Tyler Perry's iconic character. Medea is hilarious for sure, but some people think there's more to this than just laughs. Dave Chappelle, for instance, has a pretty strong opinion on this whole thing. Back when he was on Oprah's show, Chappelle threw out a big question. Why do we see so many black actors creating and playing female characters? When I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like why all these brothers have to wear a dress. Like when I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress, at some point in Korea. Chappelle shared a personal story to illustrate his point. He talked about a time when he was shooting a movie with Martin Lawrence, and he walked into his trailer and found a dress waiting for him. At first he thought there was a mix-up, but then he realized it was meant for a scene where his character was supposed to escape from jail by dressing up as a pro <laughs> Chappelle was immediately like, no way I'm not doing that, this wasn't part of the plan. The crew tried to convince him, saying it was just a funny bit and that he should go along with it. But Chappelle wasn't having it. He stood his ground saying, I don't need to wear a dress to be funny. Comes in, I think he's a writer, he's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail, so he disguises you as a <laughs> And he put this dress on. Now nah, I'm not doing that, I don't feel comfortable with that. That should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. The pressure didn't stop there. The writers, directors, and producers all kept pushing him, but Chappelle remained firm. Eventually, they gave up and came up with a new scene that didn't involve the dress. Chappelle found it suspicious how quickly they rewrote the scene and was left wondering why they were so intent on him wearing a dress in the first place. Chappelle's stance wasn't just about the dress itself. It was about what he saw as a larger trend in the industry, where black artists were often asked to compromise in ways that seemed unnecessary or even degrading. He realized he wasn't the only one going through this. Many other black men in Hollywood had faced similar situations. For Chappelle, this was a wake-up call, making him connect the dots about the pressures black entertainers often face in the industry. Tyler Perry, however, had his own take on the whole dress debate. In an interview, Perry responded to Chappelle's comments by saying, Look, Chappelle is one of the smartest guys I've ever seen, not just in comedy, but in deep thinking. If that's how it rolls in Hollywood, cool, but that ain't my story. Nobody told me to wear that dress but me. It's my $2 billion franchise, and it's always been my choice. I've done 19 movies since then, all by my own call. Maybe it's different for others, but for me it's like putting on a work uniform. I'm not a guy who enjoys wearing a dress, but as an actor, it's a costume. It's like someone going to Walmart. You put on your uniform. For me, it's about putting on that uniform, going out, making people laugh, lifting them up, and giving them some encouragement. That's how I see it. And yeah, that's not my case, right? Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I, nobody owned that dress. Right. But me. That's right. Nobody told me, a $2 billion franchise. Uh, nobody told me to put it on. That's right. Nobody makes me me put it on. Perry's words suggest he sees the Medea character and the act of wearing a dress as just another part of his job, something that allows him to entertain and inspire his audience. But there's another side to Perry's story that some people find a bit more troubling. Despite Perry being a major black entrepreneur, there are whispers that he might not be as supportive of other black creatives as he claims. Sure, he's built an empire with his own studios and has made a big deal about lifting up the black community, but some folks think it's all a bit of a facade. Take for example the time Tyler Perry reportedly fired a bunch of writers from his hit TV show House of Pain after they asked for union contracts. The show was a big success, and Perry got a lucrative syndication deal, along with a spin-off called Meet the Browns. 
but when the writers wanted fair pay and benefits, Perry allegedly wasn't willing to play ball. He let four of the writers go, which stirred up a lot of drama in the industry. Terry Brown Jackson, one of the writers, told Deadline, It was not a good look. I feel like I was slapped in the face. Like we were used. We were good enough to create over a hundred episodes. But now, when it comes to reaping the benefits of the show being syndicated and having other spin-offs from it, he decides to let us go unless we accept a horrible offer. Kelly Griffin, the head writer for Our House of Pain, wasn't about to let it slide either. She said, While I'd like to see something positive come out of this for us, if this fight helps future black writers get what they deserve, that's a good thing. Perry, for his part, claimed he was writing everything himself now. But that didn't smooth things over. His union troubles didn't end there. In 2015, actor unions SAG-AFTRA and Actors' Equity went after him, banning their members from performing in his play Medea on the Run because his production company wouldn't sign union contracts. So while Perry's managed to create a profitable empire and has become one of the most powerful voices in Hollywood, his reputation for fair treatment and support within the industry isn't as shiny as his success would suggest. 